A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. <laughs> She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. And you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor. And Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full. Add good fresh milk. Dig in and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say, She's feeling her Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Early one morning, the Lone Ranger's Indian friend Tonto rode into the town of Tobacco Ridge to buy supplies. When he returned to the masked man's camp, he reported. There's plenty of excitement in town, Kimasabi. Oh? Crooks try to rob bank last night. A bogus brow and his pal Elk been in town. Ah. Then the fellow try rob bank. Are you sure, Toto? Ah. Watchman on garden bank get good look at crooks and lantern light. And me hear description him give. Were they captured? No. No, them get way. Probably heading west. That's right. We leave the provisions you bought in your saddlebags and start after those two. And while me in town, Kimasabi, me look... <clears throat> we follow crooks' tracks. Me show you where... We pick up trail outside town. Fine. Uh, one fellow still ride horse with worn shoe. All right, let's go, Tonto. He's just going to be Come on, Silver. Come on. By taking a roundabout route through the hills, the masked man and Tonto avoided riding through Tobacco Ridge in order to reach the western side of town. There they drew rain. Oh, oh. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Here, track, Kim Sabi. Just like trail we lose yesterday. Yes, you're right, Toto. Easy, stop, easy, for that. Now we plenty close to them. They're very clever at hiding their tracks. Mm, that's right. We already lose trail once. We'll try not to lose it again. Come on, Toto. Come up, Toto. More than half a day's journey ahead of the Lone Ranger and Toto. Bogus and Elk slowed their horses to a walk to rest the animals. Oh, now, there, oh, there, when I saw the light in the bank, I told you we wouldn't have a chance. We need cash, Elk. And I think I know where we can get it. Well, if you're thinking of trying another bank robbery... I'm thinking of a law shark I know in the town of Mule Shoe. And where's that? Beyond the town of Amity. Amity's ahead of us. Mule Shoe's west of it. It's a rich cattle town. Who's your friend? A lawyer named Hector Moses. <laughs> He's on the level. How'd you get to know him? He's no more honest than we are. Fact is, he left the East to get away from a murder charge. What's he doing in new shoes? Practicing law, as far as I know. He might know how we can get hold of some easy money fast. 
If he does, he'd get it himself instead of telling us about it. Uh, not Hector. He's got to act like he's honest. But there's nothing to stop us from pulling a quick robbery and clearing out of town. Well, I want to stop long enough in the next town where you hit to get my gear fixed and replace this critter's left front shoe. Now, what's wrong with your gear? That stirrup leather needs replacing. Uh, well, we'll get a meal while it's being fixed. It suits me. Get up. Come on, get up there. town of Amity, the killers stopped at a saddle shop where an 18-year-old redhead named Pete Jones worked. Leaving their horses with him, Bogus and Elk went to the restaurant directly across from the shop. A short time later, Bogus looked up from the plate of stew he was eating. Elk, look. Hmm? Hmm? Look who just threw rain at the saddle shop. Uh, that dude's no one I know. It's Hector. Hector Moses. Uh, oh, Yeah. What's he doing here? I don't know, but I'll find out. I'll be back in a minute. A few minutes later, Bogus returned to the restaurant with Hector Moses. Meet my pal, El. How do you do? Howdy. Sit down, Hector. Thank you. I, uh, I have a problem, Bogus. Meeting you should help me solve it. Oh? What's the problem? A wealthy client of mine died a few weeks ago, Bogus. You may have heard of John Perry. No. Who's John Perry? He owned the Cloverleaf Ranch, one of the richest spreads in this part of the country. Yeah? John left a brother named Clem. He inherits the ranch, yeah? Well, yeah, part of it. The rest is to go to John's son, Pete. Now, the trouble is that Pete and his mother were with a wagon train ambushed by Redskins 15 years ago. Pete's mother was found dead, and so were the rest of the travelers. What about the boy? His body was never found. John Perry died believing his son is still alive. Mm. Now, Clem Perry is downright anxious to find the boy. Clem's unmarried and hopes that his nephew will carry on the clover leaf after he's gone. How can he carry it on if no one knows where he is? I'm supposed to locate the boy. That's some job. Yes. But I stand to collect a mighty handsome fee if I succeed. Earning it won't be easy. I have three months to find the boy. If I don't find him, the entire estate will go to Clem. But uh, if you and Elk will cooperate, my job will be easy. Huh? What do you mean? That young redhead across the street is the age Pete Perry would be if he were alive. He looks very much like John Perry. Yeah. I've learned he's an orphan. He works for his board and room in the saddle shop, and he knows nothing about his past. What about it? I might be able to palm him off on Clem as the real Pete Perry. Oh, so that's your scheme. Yes. Old Clem won't know the difference. I don't think I'll have any trouble selling him the idea the youngster's his nephew. What about selling the kid the idea? Uh, that's where you two come in. Hmm? As a reputable lawyer, I can't try to talk the youngster into doing anything shady. But uh, you can. Me? Yeah. You and Elk talk to the boy. Persuade him to go along with the uh, masquerade, and I'll make it worth your while. How worthwhile? I'll pay you $500. What? <laughs> For a swindle like that? <laughs> not on your life, Hector. Huh? Split your fee with us or forget the deal. My fee? And that's not all. What do you mean? The kid stands to inherit a big ranch when his uncle dies, doesn't he? Uh, yes. If we work this right, we can cut ourselves in for a share of the clover leaf. Hey, how do you figure that? The kid won't want anyone to know he's not Pete Perry once he's inherited the ranch. Is it so? By threatening to tell what we know, we'll have him right where we want him. <laughs> we might end up living like cattle kings, huh, Hector? Well, we may, if you talk him into going along with the idea. You leave that to Elk and me. Now, look, I want to be in the clear in case the boy makes trouble. Don't worry. What about us? You've nothing to lose. You're probably dodging the law as it is. Don't get any ideas about turning us in, Hector. You know me better than that, boy. I know you? you're a killer. The law here knows nothing about that, Murder. I know about it. And 
I'll talk if you try a double cross. You misunderstood me. I just want to be sure I'm covered when you talk to the boy. Leave me out of this deal until he agrees to pose as Pete Perry. Oh, I savvy. Come on, Elk. You yeah, go talk to the kid. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boy, did you ever have one of those rough days at school? Maybe you didn't get a real high mark on a test or score as many points as you wanted in a game. Well, that's the kind of a day a guy likes to get home and find his mother's baked a great big chocolate devil's food cake. Mmm, -hmm. a cake that says, I think you're swell no matter what. A perfect cake. The kind Mom gets every time she uses Betty Crocker Chocolate Devil's Food Cake Mix. And is it easy? All the good chocolatey fixings are right in the package. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that's so rich and homemade chocolatey good, you've got to have seconds, even thirds. Make sure there's lots of Betty Crocker Chocolate Devil's Food Cake Mix in the cupboard at your house for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Now to continue. 18-year-old Pete Jones listened thoughtfully to the proposition Elk and Bogus unfolded. It's a great chance for an orphan like you, Pete. Clem Perry's an old man. When he dies, you'll inherit the Cloverleaf Ranch. Well, uh, I'd like living on a ranch first rate, but uh, well, I don't want to go there unless Mr. Perry knows the truth. Oh, you'll be doing a lonesome old man a favor by going to the ranch and posing as his nephew. Ride a mule shoe with us, and you'll be putting yourself in line for a fine inheritance. It's a chance of a lifetime for a fellow like you. You're a fool if you pass it out. Without realizing how it happened, the red-headed orphan agreed to the plan the two killers outlined so glibly. Then Bogus signaled Hector, who was waiting in the restaurant. He joined the group. It's all set, Hector. Oh. The youngster's going to mule shoe with us. Well, glad to hear it. You'll not regret your decision, young man. Uh, I hope not. Well, let's get going. Yes. When they reached mule shoe, Bogus and Elk went to Hector Moses' office. While the scheming lawyer took Pete to the Cloverleaf Ranch, Bogus lit the lamp in the office. It was midnight before Hector returned. Yeah, here's Hector now. Oh, yes. Well, boys, it's all set. How'd things go at the range? Yeah, fine. Clem welcomed Pete with open arms. Uh, did he suspect anything was wrong? Nope. In fact, he's so pleased, he promised me a special fee for finding his long-lost <laughs> nephew. Oh, God. Oh, and by the way... I told him I met two down-and-out cowpokes who need jobs. C cowpokes? Uh, meaning you two. Oh. He's uh, short-handed right now, so he told me to send you right out. You can bunk at the ranch tonight and go to work in the morning. Work. It'll be a first-rate hideout for yeah. you. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want either one of you seen around my office, so get going. The ranch is a 45-minute ride from town. Now, Clem said you should stop at the ranch house to see him before you head for the bunkhouse. A short time after Bogus and Elf left town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rain in the moonlit darkness near the scheming lawyer's lighted office. King Snobby. Yes. Track show crooks go into office. Come out. Right way. Someone's still in the office. Uh, there's a sign in the window. Let me see. Hector Moses, attorney at law. Uh, why crooks go there? Moses may not have known they're killers. Oh. I'll wait here, Tonto. Easy. Steady, big fella. I want to ask him a few questions about those two. Be. 
did. Now listen, if you two will commit... Are you Hector Moses? Yes, but I... I... Don't be alarmed by my mask. But if you... If you're here to solicit my services as an attorney... I'm I... here for information. May I step inside? Now, now hold on, mister. I'll not detain you long. Now, this, this is highly irregular. I... A couple of killers named Elk Heber I... and Bogus Brown were here ahead of me. How did... How did you know that? Todd and I have been following them for over a week. Tonto? Yes, my Indian friend. During the 20 years I've spent in the West, I've... I've heard a lot about a masked man who travels with an Indian named Tonto. In that case, you know my mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. You, you're the Lone Ranger. That's right. I do. What's wrong? Well, nothing, sir. I, it's just that I, uh, I never expected the pleasure of meeting you. I, I'm surprised and honored. Hector Moses' mealy mouth flattery belied the panic in his heart. Having guessed his caller's identity, he knew Elk and Bogus were sure to be captured. He knew, too, that when they were behind bars, they would tell the law that Hector Moses was also wanted for murder. Thinking of the Derringer in his desk drawer, Hector tried to think of a way to draw it and take the masked man by surprise. Of course, I didn't know they were wanted by the law. When they asked me for directions, I gave them the information they wanted. I left it. I'll draw a map and show you exactly what route I think they'll travel. On the pretext of reaching for a pencil and paper, Hector opened the desk drawer, grasped the derringer, and said... Uh, please, mister. What's the idea? Surprised you, huh? Yes. Why the gun? You're not going after Bogus and Elk? No. You're through hunting our hoots. You're going to kill me? That's right. How do you expect to get away with it? I'll tell the sheriff you broke into my office and I shot you in self-defense. You'll not have a chance to tell that story. Huh? I didn't come here alone. My Indian friend Tonto was outside the window. Well, that's Hector impossible. turned for a moment to cover the window. Come here, you. you. In that split second, the masked man gripped his arm. Uh, drop no, the gun. Uh, let go of it. Drop it or I'll break your arm. Uh, no. I said drop the gun. Yes, yes, all right. Well, that's better. Uh, you must have me here crying. Uh, Come in, Tonto. What happened? Hector Moses is trying to protect Bogus and Elf. Uh, I had to do it. You were willing to kill me. I didn't want to kill you. I ain't but... him, Toto. Uh, uh, no. I'll leave you here to guard him while I follow Bogus and Elf. Following the instructions Hector had given them, Elk and Bogus had ridden directly to the Cloverleaf Ranch House. Clem and Pete were in the kitchen where the 18-year-old orphan was eating cold turkey sandwiches and milk. Standing inside the kitchen door with his hat in his hand, Elk explained... The rest of the house was dark, so we came to the back door, Mr. Perry. Well, I'm glad you did. Come in and help yourself to grub if you're hungry. Thanks, Mr. Perry. We are kind of hungry. Hey, looks like you're enjoying a first-rate spread, Pete. I've eaten as much turkey as I can hold, Elk. This is the happiest day of my life. But Dad read it, I sure wish my brother could have lived to see it. Oh, after Mr. Moses left, I found out I really am Pete Perry. What's that? You really... That's right. There's no mistake about it. You're... You're sure of that, huh? Dead sure. Pete was born in this house 18 years ago. When he was three, he and his mother started east to visit her folks. Hector Moses said the wagon train was ambushed. Well, it was. But I never believed Pete was killed. And now that I've seen the birthmark what? on Pete's arm, I know he's my nephew. Birthmark? That's right. Pete had a cloverleaf birthmark on his right upper arm. Well, that'll be... When he was three days old, his dad changed the brand of this spread from the JP to the cloverleaf. It's been that way ever since. And the brand's just like the mark on Pete's arm. His dad had it done that way. Roll up your sleeve, Pete, and show him the mark. Sure. There. That is. Well, uh, how do you look? That's sure identification. Does Hector know about this? Oh, that scheming shyster. Pete told me how he planned to fool me by getting a boy to pose as my nephew. <laughs> it's a doggone good thing I never told him about the birthmark. So you told him all about the plan, Pete? Oh, sure I did. Why, you... Hey, hey! What's the idea of the gun? Don't try reaching for yours. What's the idea, Bogus? You knew our plan. Well, yes, We can't get away with that now. But we can take whatever money's around here and clear out. Take the old man's gun, Elk. Don't try it. Hey, hey, the window. The masked man. Get him. 
No, no. As Bogus whirled to fire, a silver bullet smashed his gun. Oh. Seconds later, another bullet grazed Elk's hand. The killer dropped the weapon he had drawn. Oh. Clem Perry snatched his gun from its holster and covered the disarmed outlaws. Make a move and you'll stop, lad. Oh, no, no. Keep them covered while I come inside. I'll do that, mister. Don't move you two or I'll shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Where in the world did you come from, mister? I've been following these killers for a week, Clem. A trail led to your kitchen door. Boy, you, you know this masked man, Uncle Clem? You're doggone right I do, Pete. He and his engine pal helped your dad and me round up rustlers who were stealing our stock a few years ago. I was sorry to learn of your brother's death. Yeah, I lost my brother, but I found my nephew. Uh, meet Pete, mister. How are you, Pete? Well, uh, I'm fine now, but Bogus and Elk had me plenty word for a minute. And according to my nephew, they're mixed up in a scheme with Hector Moses. Toddles with Hector Moses now. If that double deal annoy us, squealed on us. He or... didn't have to. I know your records. He's as bad as we are. What do you mean? That skunk's wanted for a 20-year-old murder in Chicago. If that's the case, he'll pay for his crime. How about tying their hands for the trip to town, Clem? Sure thing, mister. It'll be a pleasure. After the Lone Ranger left with the prisoners he planned to turn over to the sheriff in town, Pete shook his head. Doggone, I, I don't understand. <laughs> don't understand what, Pete? A masked man helping round up rustlers, catching bogus and elk like that. <laughs> You're not the first person to question his mask, Pete. And you won't be the last. Well, why does he wear it? Because he's the Lone Ranger. I will still copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.